Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. we love you. And that's why we sing. That's why we pray. That's why we give. That's why we do all we can to demonstrate that we appreciate what you have made us. We thank you for all the trouble you have saved us from, the sicknesses, the accidents that were planned, the near misses. We thank you that we are still standing. We thank you for your word has guided us. Your hand has protected us. You have provided for us. We are grateful. And we are appreciating of you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. You are welcome to Great Grace Ministries, where we restore lives and we love people. Our mandate is to beautify our world with the word of God. And that we do with a passion. Praise the Lord. For everyone worshiping with us for the first time, we say welcome. We are grateful to have you. And we pray you come again. Amen. Amen. Welcome to my father's house. Welcome to my father's house. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter number two. That will be the Bible reading for the day. Matthew chapter 2, I'm reading from the, the Paction Translation. The Paction Translation. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter number 2 said the title is The Wise Men Visits. Jesus was born in Bethlehem near Jerusalem during the reign of King Herod. After Jesus' birth, a group of spiritual priests from the east came to Jerusalem and inquired of the people, where the child who is born king of the Jewish people. We observed his star rising in the sky. We observed his star rising in the sky, and we have come to bow before him in worship. King Herod was shaking in the core when he heard this. And not only he, but all of Jerusalem was disturbed when they had this news. So they called a meeting of the Jewish ruling priests and religious scholars demanding that they tell him where the promised Messiah was prophesied to be born. He will be born in Bethlehem in the land of Judea, they told him, because the prophecy stated, and you, little Bethlehem, are not insignificant among the clans of Judah. For out of you we emerge a shepherd king of my people Israel. Then Herod scarcely summoned the spiritual prince from the east to ascertain the exact time the star first appeared. And he told them, now go to Bethlehem and carefully look there for the child. And when you have found him, report to me so that I can go and bow down and worship him too. And on their way to Bethlehem, 
The same star they have seen in the east suddenly reappeared. Hallelujah. Amazed, they watch as it went ahead of them. Amazing. Amazed, they watch as it went ahead of them and stopped directly over the place where the child was. Hallelujah. And when they saw the star, they were so erratic that they shouted and celebrated with unsustained joy. When they came into the house and saw the young child with Mary, his mother, they fell to the ground at his feet, worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests full of gifts and presented him with gold, frankincense, and mal. Afterward, they returned to their own country by another route because God has warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. Hallelujah. Verse number 13. After they have gone, Joseph had another dream. An angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Get up now. Get up now and flee to Egypt. Take Mary and the little child and stay there till I tell you to leave for Herod intend to search for the child to kill him. So, that very night, he got up and took Jesus and his mother and made their escape to Egypt and remained there until Herod died and remained there until Herod died. All this fulfilled what the Lord has spoken through the prophet Simon by son, by the prophets, some of my son out of Egypt. When Herod realized that he has been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated. So he sent soldiers with orders to slaughter every baby, every boy two years old and younger in Bethlehem without throughout the surrounding countryside based on the time frame he was given from interrogating the wise men. This fulfilled the word of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the screaming of anguish, weeping, wailing in Raman. Rachel is weeping uncontrollably for her children, and she refused to be, to be comforted because they are dead and gone. Praise the Lord. This is a beautiful story telling us how Christmas came, why we celebrate Christmas. But inside the story, there are some details for our lives. It said, Rachel, the last part I just read, it said, I heard 
the screaming of anguish, weeping and wearing in Raymond. Richard is weeping uncontrollably for her children. And she refused to be comforted because they are dead. What did Richard do that made her lose her children? What sin did Rachel commit? What did those children do that they have to die? Because an enemy was against progress. Because Herod was afraid that another king has been born. That the promises of God has come to pass. Everyone in Israel, everyone in Jerusalem, we are expecting the Messiah to come. They were expecting it. You were expecting the baby. Everybody know you are pregnant. Everybody know one day you will go to bed. Everybody know that you are going to school. That one day you will graduate. Everybody know you have gotten married. That one day you will move to your husband's house. Everybody know you have bought a house. One day you will move into the house. And you will call people. And a lot of people will come and rejoice. A lot of people will come to celebrate. And inside of it, a lot of them will be bitter. A lot of them will be bitter and say, who are you to live this kind of a life? Who are you to graduate in school? Who are you to be able to travel? Who are you to live in the kind of house you live in? Who are you to have a child? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? It might not even be what you have done directly because Rachel was not aware. Was not aware that the wise men went to Herod's place. So his children were collaterals because of Jesus. Those children, they died because they were looking for for Jesus. Why? Because a star appeared and they want to destroy the star. The Bible says the wise men the wise men We're the one that saw the star. Herod was not aware that Jesus Christ died, that Jesus Christ was born. So, you might not be the one who will communicate your star or your sources to other people. And those people might not actually carry your message, they might share your testimony out of joy, out of excitement, but not knowing the recipient has other intentions. May we not be victims of other people's mistake. May we not be victims of other people's success. The, the star they were looking for the star Herod was looking for could not be terminated. He could not destroy the star. He could not. Why? Because God protected the star. You're going to make this declaration with me. Say, Father God, Father God protect, my star. protect my star. And see, and she did she did it from the people that want to destroy it. She did my life from the people that want to destroy it. 
If God did not shed Jesus' life, no, that's enough. If God did not shed Jesus' life, he would have been among the children that were destroyed. Because they, by the calculation, there is no way he will not be between two years and below. So every child that was born that was me, every child that was born that was me, they, that may have been the only child for that parents. Are you following me? Died. Died. You will tell me, yes, this one happened physically. That's true. In those days, in the Old Testament, every war the Israelites fought was a physical war. Is that not true? After Jesus came, after Jesus came, have you heard of the Philistines fighting Israel? No. What happened? Everything moved to the spirit realm. Everything moved to the spirit realm. That's why Jesus Christ said, those that must save me, must save me in truth and in spirit. The same way, every evil and every battle will also originate from, from, from the spirit. Are you following? If you must serve God in the spirit, if all success will come from the spirit, also every trouble, every affliction, we equally come from where? The spirit. A physical soldier might not come into your house to come to take that which belongs to you, forcefully enforce the decree of a king. That king, Herod, might be Satan. Herod might be somebody that hates you. Herod might be a soothsayer. Herod might be anybody. But he has agents that enforces his will. Are you following? Did Herod leave his throne to go destroy those people? He did not. He only issued his word. And people carried that on, their, on his behalf. The same way, the same way, in the spirit realm, people make incantations. People make sacrifices. People uses objects to appease spiritual forces and entities. You may have known some people that got involved in all kinds of other things and how they ended up. But the main principle at us most often, they don't get cut down. They use others as human shield. May you not be used as human shield. Amen. May the voice that spoke to Joseph to take the son and take him to Egypt tell you where and how you were going and how you will be why, how you will hide from this trouble until it passed. Every trouble has a season. I said every trouble has a season. If you have first-hand knowledge by God's spirit and by God's direction, takes you out. If you were Jesus at that time and God told you or told your parents to take you out from the school, the day the shooting was going to happen in school, though the shooting took place, you will not be there. Are you hearing me? God is the only one that sees the future because he's the Alpha and the Omega. He knows every plans. And when you partner with him, he's obligated to protect 
and to give you the necessary information in any way or form, in such a way that you can understand it. Are you following me? He might use people to tell you to do what you need to do. It is left for you to do it. Because if Joseph has said, maybe I ate too much this night, that is why I had this dream. It's not important. Even when God was willing to protect the child Jesus, he would have seen become a victim. Did you hear me? If Joseph did not act on the word that he received, even when God wanted to protect Jesus, he would have been a victim in the hands of Herod. May you hear the voice of God and the voices that God sent to give you direction at every season of your life. Christmas, Christmas, this period now, a lot of people are depressed. A lot of people are angry. A lot of people are frustrated. Because at the beginning of the year, there was a lot of excitement, a lot of plans, a lot of dreams. By December, I will be so in so, so place. I will have achieved this much. But the storms of life came. The challenges of life came. Government policies changed. And they now became the victim of their environment. Looking back 12 months later, it's all regrets. It's all pain. May you not be a victim of your environment. May you not be the victim of your environment. Come what may. God said, you have to operate from the spirit realm. If you learn to live your life from the spirit realm, you will always have the advantage. We have physical activities that we are engaging to keep our body fit, to be able to sustain ourselves in the society. So we also have spiritual activities we must engage in so we can be sensitive in the spirit, so we can walk in the spirit and be ahead in the spirit so we can be ahead in the physical. Whether you like it or not, evil is real. God is real. There is good and there is bad. There is health. There is sickness. They come from different sources. Depend on which sources is louder in your life. Are you hearing me? If the voices of negativity, of Satan and his demon forces are louder, they will influence your world. But if the influence of the Holy Spirit and God is louder in your life, it will influence your reality in life. There is no two divides. It's either you are on God's side or you are on the other side. But on the other side, there is no guarantee. Anything can happen. But on God's side, there are some promises that comes. Number one, he said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. No matter what. On the other side, he said, he comes to steal. He comes to destroy. He comes 
to steal. He comes to kill. And he comes to destroy. He has no friends. He has no friends. That you are in his camp is not a guarantee that you are spared from being stolen from, from being attacked, or from being destroyed. There's no guarantee. But in Christ, Christ, he said, I am the light. I am the life. And whosoever walketh with me will not walk in darkness. Not to walk in darkness is not to walk in the territory of the wicked. If you walk in the light, darkness will no longer have power over you. But guess what? He makes people so busy and takes spiritual exercise as irrelevance until they are afflicted, until they run into issues. Then they begin to ask, how, why me? What will Rachel ask, why did my children die? Why? The children never committed any offense. Rachel never committed any offense. Every child that was killed, they never committed anything. But they were victims. They were victims. So what is it for us? Is that we must listen and learn at all times and be sensitive to what God intends to do in and with us. How? The Bible says, submit all your plans. How many? All your plans before me and he will make it succeed. He will make it succeed. If you want to have success, what do you do? You submit it. How do you submit it? In prayers. God, oh, thank you for where I am now. Thank you. It's not by my strength. It's not by my power. I thank you that I am here. You know where you want me to be. These are my desires. Please help me. Send me helpers. Send me people of influence. Send me people that will guide me so I get to that place. Protect me and help me, Lord. It's that simple. Are you hearing me? We are ruled by the word of God. And God is only moved by the things we say. God is only moved by the things we say. Do God not know that we require these things? Yes, he does. But he is the one that said, pray to me. Ask me. Ask me, and I will give. Knock, and I will open. You can be at the door, and you refuse to knock, he will not open. You must follow principal laws. You must follow spiritual laws. Are you hearing me? Every plan. It seems very simple, but it's difficult to practice. Because sometimes we think the plan that we have is significant. So it's not worth praying about. It's not worth talking to God about. Oh, I have seen people do I have seen people do it. I know how to do it, so I can do it. It doesn't work like that. You are special. I said you are special. 
And if you are special, you must operate with that speciality. You must carry that uniqueness. That's more that I will never fail in my life. I will never fail in my life. My children will not fail in life. I will not fail in life myself. Hallelujah. The Bible says, many are the affliction of the righteous. Many are the affliction of the righteous. <laughs> Did you hear? Who? The righteous. Many are the affliction of the righteous. The person that is good, he said, many are his problems. If he had stopped there, it would have been difficult. But he said, but God deliver him from them all. God deliver him from them all. Though they are many, though they are many, he said, God deliver him from all of the trouble. You are a Christian doesn't exempt you from troubles. Doesn't exempt you from temptation. Any pastor that tells you otherwise is a liar. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God deliver them from all of them. From all of it. Praise the Lord. You see, when people are more happy, they attract a spirit. And that spirit is not the spirit of God. When people are in pain, they are bitter. They don't operate rationally. They operate from the place of pain from the place of jealousy, from the place of anxiousness, their irrational decisions have a lot of consequence. They could destroy anything, including their selves and those they love. Because when people are being bittered, frustrated, pained, Little steps they're supposed to have taken, they will refuse to take it. For instance, you received a gift. What are you supposed to say? What are you supposed to say? Thank you. How difficult was that? But if you are bitter and you receive a gift, will you say thank you? Instead, you will say, is that all? Really? Over 12 months? This is what you gave me? Instead of them to say thank you, they will release. They will release a blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Will they release a blessing? No. They will not. Instead, they will take it and use it against the person. That was what Herod did. The promise of God, Christ, he was told that the promise of God, that all the prophets had been prophesying from the beginning, up to death has come to pass. The gift has been delivered. Amazon has delivered the gifts. And he said, where did they drop it? And he said, let me go. Go find it. As soon as you find the place where he was delivered, let me know. So I too will go there. Was he saying the truth? No, he was lying. So that he could destroy it. So that he could destroy it. The gifts that God promised humanity. That through these gifts, 
every man that believe in him, that receive him as their Lord and Savior, will no longer suffer death. He wanted to destroy it because the, the, because the gift was vulnerable, the gift was young, the gift though is had all the potentials to be able to save man, he could not even protect himself. You may be starting something small. Everybody knows that if they give you time, it will grow. If they give you space, you will do well. If they give you the opportunity, you will excel. So what they do, they kill it at the beginning. At that beginning, there is no stamina. At that beginning, there is no strength. At that beginning, there is no resources. But the Bible says, everything that has life must grow. Everything that has life must grow. That is why he said there is seed time and there must be a harvest. During seeding, the seed is so small. It looks it look insignificant. It doesn't look important. But if you allow that seed with time, you nurture the seed, you plant the seed with time. You sleep, you wake up. You sleep, you wake up. Someday, you go to your backyard, you see something has come out from the ground. It has started to grow. But if somebody went in after you plant the seed, to you, it's not a big deal. Somebody went in there, took out the seed, and left. Doesn't matter how many times you sleep and wake up. When you come out one day, this place will be as dead as it was before you put it there. What is different? Because they did not allow the seed to grow. May people that steal seed not steal your seed in the name of Jesus. Every destiny is a seed. Every life is a seed. And it has a potential to grow. Every opportunity is a, is, it's a door that could lead to so many other doors. But if they prevent you from entering the first door, you may never have access to the rest of the doors. If they prevent you, they prevent you to have access to start that job, you may never retire in that job. But if you have access to get that interview and they open the door, you show up, you do your job, you show up, you do your job, you may retire and build a fortune because that single door that opened. Are you hearing me? But on the other hand, if the door was open, and somebody now gave a negative reference to you, and said, don't, no, don't worry about him. He cannot do the work. I know him, he's not trustworthy. He's a cheat, he's a liar. This person says, okay, thank you for telling me this information. And he don't give you that job. Will you get retired? No. You're supposed to have an admission to an institution, and you never gain that admission. 20 years down the road, you never, never went to college. Now, at the time you took that decision, you tried a couple of times. You knocked at the door. It did not open. You knocked at another. It did not open. You knocked at another. It did not open. Time was going. Time was flying. But the people around you, they were doing things at their own, at their own pace. Years down the road, you look back. Because of the door that did not open, you, you are now disadvantaged. You are now 
in a place of regret. The people that are supposed to be, that used to be your peers, are now the people you now look up to for help. The people that you used to help because doors were shut over and over and over and over again. Though you were talented, though you had a potential, though you had a capacity, but they did not allow it to grow. May people that keep destiny, the people that frustrate efforts, May them be far away from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. May he give you the ability to know who are your real friends. And who are your real brothers. I will say that again. May God let you know. Those are your real friends. And those that are your real brothers. Joseph had 12 brothers. And out of the 12, 11 of them came together and, say, and said, let us, let us kill him so that the dream will not come to pass. Not his friends, not his neighbors, his brothers, his relatives. Most of them, the things that you will suffer in life may not necessarily come from outsiders because they don't know you. They don't see your star. But those that see your stars, those that know what you can become, they are in your household. May you not be a victim of your household. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is Christmas period. It's a season of peace. It's a season of joy. It's a season of love. But in the midst of this, be careful. Be vigilant. And be prayerful. Let nothing take you on our ways. Let God be number one in your life. Let God be your friend. You see, there is a place in the Bible. It's James chapter number 5, verse 16 to 17. We're not going to read it because of time. It said, Elijah prayed by himself. He prayed by himself. And God answered. So pray by yourself. There, might, there, might, there are times you will not have a pastor to pray with you or pray for you. Pray by yourself. Talk to your Heavenly Father about your plans. And He will answer. And He will help you. In this season, I declare every direction you require, God will grant it to you. You will finish this year better than you started it. The joy of God and the joy of the season will be yours. In the name of Jesus, what caught people down in this city, in this nation will not cut you down. What caught people down in your family will not cut you down. What caught people down in the society you live will not cut you down. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will finish well and you will finish strong. The joy of God will guide you. The voice of God will direct you. He will draw you out from many waters. He will deliver you from all pain. He will frustrate the plans of the wicked concerning you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will be the head and not the tail. No matter what they throw at you, you will still be standing. In the mighty name of Jesus, God will not forsake you. God will not forsake you. God will not forsake you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Everywhere you go, may the angels of God go ahead of you. May your star go ahead of you. 
may it light your path for you may you walk in the course that god has set before you may you not veer to the right or to the left in the name of jesus even when you do stray away may the hand of god may the hand of god guide you back in the name of jesus you will make progress you will make impacts your life will be significant you will not die young you will not die young you will not die young you will not die in pain in the name of jesus from the crown of your head to the, to the sole of your feet i declare head for you in the name of jesus clear vision for you you will enter 2024 and you will go beyond it in the name of jesus the joy of the lord will be your strength in the name of jesus what frustrate people will not frustrate you in the mighty name of jesus may the anointing of god answer for you may god lift up help us for you all over the world wherever you go you will not be stranded in the name of jesus i declare wherever you go you will not be stranded in the mighty name of jesus they may surely gather but everyone that gather for your sake may the glory scatter them in the name of jesus may the angels of god scatter them in the mighty name of jesus they might be from your household they might be your friends they might be from your workplace it doesn't matter where they gathered the bible said their cancer of the wicked will not stand in the name of jesus i frustrate the counsel of the wicked concerning you in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that the rest of this week and the next eight days that are ahead of you there will be a time for celebration for you you will receive everything that God has prepared for you. Whatever has eluded you from January to date, that is marked for the year 2023, may all the blessings come to you by speed. May they come to you by grace. May it come to you effortlessly. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree that supernatural help will be available for you all time. In Jesus' name. Amen.